answered when at, when she was asked why she talked so fast, it's because I have so much to say. But our focus is a little different. We want to build, help you build with our content and your own content, the perfect text for your students and your cause. So support's always important. We get support from the uh, Department of Education in the United States. We've had support from NSF, various other sources. The agenda today is to tell you, give you a taste of what LibreText is and what it isn't. It is a construction platform. It's a very special one. It's a dissemination platform with a global reach, and it's a publishing platform. And it has within it tools you can use for assessment. So our libraries span the undergraduate curriculum, and they can be used by faculty with minimal computer experience beyond just simply pointing to a URL. Uh, you can remix and add content quickly and simply. You can collaborate. You can make data-driven improvements to optimize learning. We have a lot of advanced features which actually turn out to be fairly simple to integrate because we have a common format. We're cloud-based, we're zero cost, and we have no local IT costs. Our mission is to build this community, to use the community to create OER, but not just the resources, but also the platform and the portal. We want it to be comprehensive, and we want to curate it at multiple levels. We're a community of faculty. Mostly, we have some librarians. We have now the occasional uh, administrator but we're mostly faculty and we're faculty driven and we originated in STEM. So we have more of a presence in STEM and most of the people involved are STEM people. Let me go to the UNESCO definition. It's important to us. Their OER is teaching learning materials that are in the public domain. They have licenses that facilitate free use, adaptation and distribution. And free use is, I think, a very important part of being open. Okay. Textbooks are historically the educational resource, but the cost of textbooks has become debilitating. And actually, the cost of textbooks has provided an opportunity for OER, but it is an opportunity we have to take. There's no longer a textbook market. Publishers are no longer publishers, they're providers of online systems, of ed tech, uh, and especially of homework systems that relieve the work of colleagues and ourselves who are really stressed for time because of all these other things that are pulling at them, at us. The textbook publishers have now become the ed tech uh, providers, and they're using inclusive access to kill off competition, but OER is a disruptor. Friend of mine, friend of Delmar Larson, who's the executive director, back in 2008 pointed out, hey, the Wikipedia killed off the encyclopedia manufacturers, publishers. Uh, this model of OER may not be as strange or silly as it sounds. Okay. So we need tomorrow's textbooks today, but the textbooks, people really use textbooks as crutches. Textbooks limit curricula, they limit content development because students get very uncomfortable when you don't follow the textbook. So our mission at Libertex is to help you build the perfect text for your students and your course. When most faculty, not the people listening here, think about uh, OER, they say, okay, I'll give my students a pointer, a URL to an OER library. And that's the textbook. But that's not something that will work, not in today's world, uh, certainly not in a COVID-19 uh, limited situation. You have to surround the textbook with services that support and enhance the textbook. You need a 
homework system, you need online computation, you need JavaScript, you need learning analytics, you need if, if you're going to by hand clean up every problem, it's not going to work. You need some sort of bot server. You need a way to transfer the information to learning management systems so faculty can use them. This shows in how we are organizing our homework system. We're not going to create different uh, sets of of, of, of examples, of questions. We're going to use things that already exist, and we're going to use H5P and other things, JavaScript, to actually create the problem libraries. We're going to bring that into our content so you can display the, we're already doing this, so you can display uh, the question inside your textbook. You can set up exercises, labs, all sorts of other things. Formatively, then, you can use the returns from th those uh, questions to help your students, or you can create uh, a transfer, a summative transfer of the grades to your learning management system. We just got a new uh, grant from California Education Learning Lab to create a homework system in chemistry at first. It's going to use a linear model with static decision trees. And the reason for this, rather than an AI or machine learning approach, is that it's a lot easier for faculty to edit this to meet the needs of their students. They can change the questions around, things like that. We have a centralized approach. This may annoy a lot of people. We've given up the flexibility of FOSS and other things like that. We have we come across online on a commercial system. It provides high stability. Somebody's looking at it. If it goes down, you can, it affects effective sharing. And it makes things very easy to provide new services. I'll talk about some of them as we go on. The OER universe. One of the principal options of faculty to OER is where do I find it? But it turns out you can slice this up. At least in the North American contents, context, there are really only four or five uh, places to go. Uh, there's OpenStax, concentrates on high quality, low cost printed textbooks for high enrollment cost courses. They use Perl. Uh, they, had an on, they have an online site, but it's kind of getting weaker. Lumen concentrates on providing complete courseware at a per seat per cost. cost. Uh, you can both buy from them. SUNY, Open SUNY did that. Uh, Pressbooks provides a referatory. They also provide, and it's very important, uh, they provide free FOSS Pressbook software to create OER, and you've got us. So we're a university-based collaboration. We're becoming a nonprofit network, so it becomes easier for other institutions to join together. Uh, and we use a wiki-like system, which is provided by MindChess. Touch. There are referatories and uh, repositories, and there are all national or large ones, and there are local ones, and the local ones often provide services to build out textbooks, some small grants and things like that, regional hubs. Our approach is that the content should all be interconnected, not in separate books, that we want to integrate what's already out there into a common format, that can be cross-referenced and we can add meta tags. Properly meta tagging, we've instituted this now, allows us to actually create indices for every book using the index. So uh, right now it's only in a couple of libraries in a little while, probably by the end of April, we're gonna have it everywhere, that if a text is properly meta tagged, tag, you can automatically generate an index and a glossary. When a student comes in, they will see this picture here. If you come over here, you can get, get an account. Your students can get an account. That lets them do some, some useful things. But you can request an instructor account so you can work to create your own textbook. Okay. The bookshelves are centrally 
curated. We have over 100,000 pages of content across the curriculum. Local courses are found uh, on the course shell page. And this shows, this is just shows a typical page. There are two things I want to point out. If you have a book and you correct on the star, or actually if you collect for any book, the system will send you an email when this is all, when anything on this page is altered. Over here, you can print out any page. And here's hypothesis, so you can annotate the page. The editor is fairly simple. Uh, I think most people uh, have seen editors like this. Uh, you can use anything that uh, Unico has Unicode, so you can do Chinese, Japanese, any ideographic language. If you try and copy anything in Libertext, you'll get a message saying what the license is. We know about the five R's, but the five R's are rights of creators. We believe that there are two other R's. I'm, I'm sorry, this, well, there's accessibility, the right to read content. There's reach, the right to read it anywhere. Our reach is global. Our demographics are probably what you would expect, mostly students. The problem, of course, with OER, online OER, is that there are regions that less than 10% of the population have access to electricity, let alone internet. So we provide books, and we've done some things with the books. Every uh, video in the book has a QR code in it. Now, you can't run video in books, but you can point your smartphone at the QR code and get to the video. We're working on Libertext in a box. Every one of our book, every book in our library is available as a file that you can to a just-in-time printer like Lulu and get printed out for low costs. This is our, dis our distribution library. Uh, you can import to an LMS, you can get individual zip files of each chapter, or you can get the print book file. So we think there are seven R's. Okay. We try to make things easy to edit, low expertise, meaningful editing, so you can change the content to match your students. We have over 100 million page views per year. 700 books. We're bringing in eight more per week. There are barriers which we've talked about previously uh, in other sessions. Faculty think there's not enough resources. It's too hard to find. There's no comprehensive catalog. We're trying to meet these things. If faculty use a textbook, they do things that, not ours, but just print a textbook, you skip sections, you teach topics in different orders, you give out some materials, you place content from other sources, and students hate all these things. So we've developed an on-ramp that will let you deal with them. This was developed at Sacramento City College by Kevin Flash. There's a two-hour institute. Faculty learn how to deal with OER and licenses. Then they work with librarians to create OER map. They check this map, again, identify gaps, uh, analyze accessibility. They deliver a course map. We then bring this into the uh, Libertex project. We create a remixing map, so we actually identify what things have to be mixed together, and we publish the text. We're trying to build this LibreNet consortium. Uh, costs are very, very low. Uh, and uh, there are a couple of levels of membership. Uh, not going to go into it too much. One of them, of course, is you get a single click bookstore. I apologize, but the, this PowerPoint is not translating very well to the software here. It, it looks OK for mine. OK, here's the remixer. You can basically take start a new book, 
take material from any place, put it into your book, it will renumber properly. The figures will renumber, equations will renumber, everything like that. Uh, and you can add other things. You can take stuff out. You can take, if you're doing economics, you can put some statistics in. You may have to edit that. Uh, and then you can publish it. And when you publish it, you get a book. The book is mostly a pile of links, but you can translate that into HTML automatically, and then you can edit the HTML. So a little bit, I think I have one minute left, a little bit on uh, basically analytics. This was from my course a while ago. The students thought the book was okay. Uh, they thought that it met the need and you, would you recommend it? Yeah, okay. You can get some very easy to find analytics out of uh, Google Analytics. Uh, this is a traditional course. You can see where the exams are. But if you teach a flipped course, it's not so clear where the exams are. Now, one interesting things is, thing is that the web search engines find the uh, material. And you can get a global reach, a branded global reach for your course. We also ran a rather serious evaluation pilot. And the outcome was what is, these things have mostly found, that it's at least equivalent to printed textbooks. But I think the advantage of OER is that it's formative. You can use the analytics to improve it much on a much faster scale than a printed textbook. Uh, I'm not going to go through this. The usual mind-bending uh, table at the end of a talk. And come join us. I'm going to go over later today uh, to my uh, Twitter account, and I'm going to also take a look at the social space here. Thanks very much. Thanks for that uh, very com comprehensive overview, Josh. Um, if there are any questions, um, people are we've got uh, five minutes or so. If people want to raise their hand, we can pass a mic to you, or you're welcome to use the chat box as well. I'll just give people a moment to see if they want to respond. Uh, there, were, there was one comment. There was one comment about uh, what I sh showed had an NC response. Is uh, NC? There, are, there are various licenses. You can have an argument. These are the licenses of the creators of the material. You you can have a, a you can have one of these arguments about um, you know these things these definitional arguments that uh, go on forever. Uh, we respect the license of the creator of the material. So um, just to say that there will be a recording posted um, and I can I'm just on the Libre text site now so I can share a link um, so recordings will be posted on the website we should get through those this evening oh Josh has beat me to the Libre text um, Josh, do you, do you find any issues with I know there are certain sites uh, in Europe that republish um, CC content, but they, they wrap it around advertising. So they, they put lots of ad blocks around um, Creative Commons content. Is that something you're discovering with contributors to LibreText? Remember, we bring everything into the common format. So there are no ad blocks. But you, you don't find people are just lifting your, your content wholesale and well, remarketing. We, we, we are open in that sense. 
uh, I believe Sailor has harvested our uh, con some of our content at least. But uh, that's one of the things you have to live with if you try and be open at, at any level. That's great. So I think actually our next presentation probably follows on quite nicely. So um, uh, uh, we can just show our appreciation for, for Josh. Um, uh, some applause. Mm -hmm.